anyway, you might be wondering exactly what it is which qualifies me and this opinion mm-hmm. that I have. And that, you know, you guys might also have yourselves. It's the mullet, right? And, uh, well, I was going to say absolutely nothing because you can have whatever mm-hmm. fucking opinion you want. Mm-hmm. Except some opinions are certainly worth being weighed a little bit more. For example, mm-hmm. um, we work in professional broadcasting and media. Yes. Mm. Perhaps, given that background, mm-hmm. we know a thing or two about professional broadcasting and media. I don't follow. We may have also mm. been specifically working in the field of professional broadcasting and media of fucking CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So perhaps when was this? we know a thing or two <laughs> about those specific Things. Things. Yes. And perhaps some of us have also been involved in broadcast and media for real sports, not just <laughs> fake sports like CrossFit. Perhaps that is also the case. So we have comparisons that we can make. Unlike, unlike, in fact, unlike uh, the other half of this table, Cliff and I have lots of experience covering all kinds of sports for many, many years who have trajectories that are in many ways <laughs> analogous to the changes that CrossFit mm-hmm. is undergoing now. Continue on. Who to thunk it? And... You know, I guess people lose sight. Like you mentioned the Black Box Summit. Yep. Um, people lose sight of the the things that get swept under the rug. And again, okay, I know exactly Detailed how this is going to go. Black Box Summit, yeah, yeah. for those I'm, of those I'm, who are listening. Well, I before, I, before I explain what the Black Box Summit was, I'm, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to say right now, I'm just going to get ahead of it. Yep. I guess if you really want to hear this, and think of me <laughs> as a shill because I'm telling this story as opposed to any other story of what's uh-huh. going on. Sure. But here's here's basically what the Black Box Summit was. Dun-dun-dun. The Black Box used to be a concept of, of, of what fitness looked like, right? You would put in an input into a black box within which you had no idea of what was going on. And then you get an output. You get an outcome mm-hmm. from that. And the idea was the input you put in would be like strength work and some conditioning and something happens in the body and then you have a fitter human being. Mm-hmm. And the reason why you use the black box model is because on a on like a base physiological sense, for so many people, it almost didn't matter exactly what the physical chemical changes were. What mattered was the input and the output. Right, the input being some fitness work, the output being a healthier, fitter human being. Famous example that I love, just to, uh, just to, we'll be quick about it, which was Greg Glassman, I believe, talking about a team of um, uh, elite skiers he had worked with somehow, and he's like, they, they he assessed all of their uh, strengths across many modal domains, found that the skiers were really bad at pull-ups. He had no idea whether or not pull-ups would actually, I don't know if he was directly involved, this was just something he heard anecdotally, were uh, how pull-ups would contribute to faster downhill times. But he then uh, got them all to work on their pull-ups and do pull-ups, and all of their downhill times went down. And he was asked, well, how is, what is it about the pull-up that makes downhill times? And he says, not only do I not know, I don't care. I just know <laughs> that, that if you increase your work capacity across broad time and modal domains, you will get better at whatever your sport is, and the outcome is all that matters. He's like, I don't care how it is. So anyway, just as a right, little and so of that. so the the concept of the black box, whether it's correct or not, mm-hmm. that that's the idea behind the black box. It's just one way of looking at what you do in the gym. You just do some stuff and you get fitter, and you can you can mess with those inputs and outputs as much as you want and try and figure it out. But you know, from a simplest conceptual perspective, you almost don't need to worry about. It. That's the idea behind the black box. The black box summit was a meeting of great minds in the CrossFit space. Imagine if like today, uh, like Ben Bergeron, CJ Martin, uh, uh, Nick Shaw, right? He's the guy with RP strength. Uh, and Max, mm-hmm. Max, I don't know. Uh, I don't know names. uh, you know, uh, the brute strength guys and, uh, you know, the, who, like the head of the, another person involved with I was like, I'm trying to think of training think tank, but I forgot his name. <laughs> yeah. Max L. Hag. There you go. Uh, you know, like a bunch, imagine if like the best coaches in the world from like weightlifting and CrossFit and the best nutrition coaches in the world showed up and like, you know, the event organizers who were putting together all the sanction events showed mm-hmm. up and put together like a weekend with all the affiliate owners who wanted to be there to learn about their business to learn about their coaching to learn about you know the 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 physical aspects of training their clients and sounds pretty goddamn sinister sounds pretty fucking terrible right who'd have thunk that anybody would want to participate in such an evil plan Mm -hmm. 
So the Black Box Summit was this meeting of minds. And it involved a bunch of people uh, who were the best at what they did uh, in the space at that time. For example, Greg Everett, who is a weightlifting coach, I know that guy. very good weightlifting coach, Catalyst Athletics, if you've ever heard of it, that's Greg mm-hmm. Everett. Um, and also Rob Wolf, mm-hmm. who uh, is credited with bringing paleo into the mainstream mm-hmm. and particularly bringing paleo into CrossFit. A person who, believe it or not, used to be synonymous with CrossFit nutrition recommendations. Absolutely. Back in the day. Absolutely. Back when Barry Sears and The Zone were like the only thing to look at, everyone said, oh, you can measure the quality or the quantity of your food. And quantity was Zone. And then everyone had this idea of like, kind of maybe eating cleaner but it wasn't Mm -hmm. defined until paleo became a thing and that was mainly due i think to rob wolf i don't i don't think i'm overstating that rob wolf was a big big launching point for paleo. he was very early on the paleo thing yeah yeah. yeah. uh i think he got a lot of that from art devaney uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and he was very present on on CrossFit. Mainstream. Yeah, he was. Videos he being was, posted yeah. constantly where he's describing interactions with clients and about the qualities of food and a lot of. Uh, and while they also posted a lot of very Sears videos back in the day that were zone oriented, I you know a lot of the um, a lot of the the content like the CrossFit did, nutrition seminar it, was Rob Wolf's. Well, yeah, seminar. It's like, exactly. it's like, imagine if you will where CrossFit's videos on nutrition were uh, spearheaded by a charming knowledgeable telegenic person mm-hmm. who was making frequent videos about nutrition that were useful for the community mm-hmm. you like, know imagine that imagine not something crossfit would want to happen obviously but uh yeah uh, why would you um anyway so those were those were two examples uh the wor- world famous weightlifting coach mm-hmm. and world famous uh, mm-hmm. uh nutrition guru and uh and then also dave castro Mm-hmm. Showing up to the Black Box Summit because this was the Black Box Summit was meant to be this meeting of CrossFit as a corporation, HQ, mm-hmm. like, you know, the headquarters meeting with the best of the best in the space from the coaching, the the, the knowledge standpoint, the affiliate standpoint mm-hmm. and coming together to share best practices. That's the that was the entire point of the Black Box Summit. How many people were there, do you think? Uh, a few hundred. Wow. I don't think I don't think it was like it mm-hmm. wasn't like a huge knockout like every every affiliate owner showed up, but you had like you know maybe two hundred two hundred fifty people show up to this thing for over the course of the weekend. I, I think that's that's a pretty good good showing. And then everything exploded. Mm-hmm. Essentially, during a uh, during a, a a presentation, I believe it was Rob Wolf giving this presentation. Yeah. During a presentation, he like sort of referred to some concept but didn't just dis- define it he just mm-hmm. referred to some concept didn't define it and uh castro sort of like called out from the back of the room for him to like like kind of aggressively like hey get m- go deeper into this like tell us more about this why doesn't this work or why is this the case or mm-hmm. whatever and uh rob having been a business partner with greg everett mm-hmm. and a bro Thought it was Greg Everett and was like, "Don't worry, honey. I'll tell you about it. I'll, I'll tell you all about it later." Uh huh. And didn't realize it was Castro that he was talking to, oh, who, nice. who, who who had like yelled that out. Mm-hmm. And Castro was like, uh, "Not cool with that response." And shut the shut fucking her. thing down. Not not cool with a completely innocuous mistake. Right. And and turned it into what the fuck did you just say to me? And immediately blew it up stopped the presentations like a sane person would like a sane person <laughs> uh and you can read all about this i'm sure if you just google black box summit i'm, I'm sure it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll all come up sorry but basically the story the story escalates from there to uh you know like a bunch of these people like you know slowing things down bringing the temperature in the room down a little bit taking it outside to have a conversation about you know maybe what the misunderstanding here was and then Greg Everett and Rob Wolf are excommunicated from CrossFit. So <laughs> <laughs> how's that for a black box? You get yeah. this input, <laughs> slight mistake, uh, you know, uh, uh, two bros being bros. Yeah, and yeah. then the output out of this black box within which you have no 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 viewing is uh, is excommunication from CrossFit. Well, the other thing is just that, and, I, and who knows how these things happen, but it just uh, essentially a shouting match at a thing leads to two... 
at that point, subject matter experts within the CrossFit kind of larger organization, uh, just being just completely cutting all ties, being separated from CrossFit. And uh, and I guess CrossFit sort of just circling the wagons and standing by Dave Castro. Meanwhile, all of us in the community at the time, the much more the much sort of smaller and more connected CrossFit community at the time, were like, we liked those guys better than we like the psychopath who yelled at them and made them go away. And so on some level, we've kind of been waiting for CrossFit to cut ties with that psychopath for a long time, but it was unfortunate they couldn't do it. And you know why? Because the CrossFit games every year are held on Dave Castro's parents' ranch. Oh, wait, they aren't anymore at all. And yeah. that was, at the time, still a really relevant factor with why they circled the rat wagons around him, if, I'm, if I recall. Yeah. I'm, I, that's pure, pure speculation on my part. Yeah. Pure speculation and he, on my part. And here is also another odd thing. Now, none of us were there to see it, but... Of the story, the story that Armin just told is the story that circulated from, I guess, Wolf and uh, Everett there, and it looks really bad for Castro. And if there was another side to the story that makes Castro look good, that was never articulated yeah. by anybody. Yeah. So there nope. was no there was no alternative explanation that <laughs> made from CrossFit really that made Castro look good or justified in doing that. And my guess is that Armin, being as connected as he is, is hearing it from the horse's mouth. Am I wrong, Armin? Uh you're not wrong. Um, but I, I will tell you that there there's much more to this and there may be potential, you know, uh there there could be some there could be some mistakes in my retelling of this story. No, right? I haven't I haven't heard this story in nearly ten years. This happened in two thousand nine. I believe wow. it was sweetheart, not honey. It could have been recall. sweetheart. Yeah, it could have yeah. been sweetheart. And ooh, that one does cut a little bit more. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm reading. You can and you can Google this if you just Google Black Box mm-hmm. Summit. The story that you're looking for is the Black Box Summit or how I got fired from the CrossFit Nutrition Cert by Rob Wolf. Yeah. And, uh, and in all fairness, Rob Wolf has become virulently anti CrossFit in subsequent years, which I can't get on board with. You know, he's you know uh, like kind of tried to dance on their grave a little bit when the hostile takeover thing was happening, which I'm not absolutely cool with. he did. He <laughs> was oh, like, absolutely. he was like, thank God, fuck yeah. these guys. But in all fairness, if 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 some crazy person stands up and screams you out of the organization, and then that organization circles their wagons around that crazy person, um, I would understand feeling a bit bitter. Can't be on board with his anti CrossFit fitness since then but at the same time it's still a shitty situation and yeah there might well have been i believe there were some things going on behind the scenes with rob wolf not getting along with greg glassman and disagreeing about nutrition philosophies and all that so it didn't come completely completely out of nowhere in terms of them siding with castro over rob wolf but Mm. uh it's (laughs) so so just to give you an idea of of who is who is present to uh to to have Mm -hmm. a a say from hq here Mm -hmm. are the here are the main people that uh that that rob wolf mentions being there right uh you know they they basically talk about how you're you're trying to create sort of like a, a a better business practice for a trainer for a business owner for all that stuff that was the entire point of the black box uh the black box summit and uh and not only was director of training, which is what his title was back then, Dave Castro, yeah. director of training, Dave Castro was there, but also media czar, Tony <laughs> Budding, head of media, Perfect. and yeah. Russell Berger oh, snap. Mm. was the was the other main HQ person out there. And uh, he goes, uh, uh, he brings up this interesting point. Um, he goes, anyway, Russell asked many questions throughout the weekend, always after either Tony or Dave leaned over and whispered in his ear. Russell, I believe, does own an affiliate, which is an experience that neither Dave nor Tony have. Hey-o. And the emissaries from HQ are interesting in that none had extensive training experience. None have any strength and conditioning education outside of CrossFit and are largely incapable of articulating any nuanced methodology in strength and conditioning wow. and none have a background in anatomy physiology or exercise science in fact craig glassman never had a formal education in this material but has formidable self-taught knowledge for most part hq staff does not reflect that knowledge base mm. 
That's wow. that's brutal. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely brutal. This is also, I think, a a, uh, a, a an emotionally charged yeah, like salt uh, fresh in the wounds. Oh yeah, yeah. salt. So yes, yes. Very fresh wounds. Everything very very. So the the exact moment, and I, I the reason why yeah. I want to get into this is because because this is really this is really specifically appropriate yes. for this moment that we're talking about. Uh, on the second day after lunch, uh, you know, they had they had spent the morning with Rob talking about paleo mm-hmm. and talking about how zone is pretty garbage mm-hmm. and that paleo is a much better, you know, methodology. And he was kind of told aside, he was pulled aside by Castro and told, stop talking shit about zone, mm-hmm. right? You have to stop talking shit about zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, after lunch, uh, Everett, Greg Everett came up to talk about weightlifting as it deals with top level CrossFitters improving their performances and he goes, uh, he had, Greg had num- numerous photos in his PowerPoint presentation, one of which was Annie Sakamoto doing a barbell clean. This was a photo that HQ had used on CrossFit.com as an example of quote unquote good form. Um, and Greg Everett pointed out the shortcomings of this technique displayed in the photo. A bit later, Greg showed a photo of Nicole Carroll doing a medicine ball clean with a form error that Greg would later explore in depth. When this photo came up, Greg said, I'm not going to get into this right now. And Dave Castro yelled out, no. Get into it. <laughs> Greg thought this was Michael Rutherford. Rutherford, Coach Rutt, is the guy who came up with the concept of the black box ah. and said, not now, sweetie. Oh, so it was Greg who said, not now, sweetie. Yeah, yeah. that's how I recall oh, Okay. It None of us no, no, it. It was, it was game of Rutt, telephone. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was Rutt that said, uh, not now, sweetie. He goes, either way, Dave thought he'd been disrespected and yelled out in the middle of the lecture, oh, there's only 70 people, attended by over 70 people from around the world at an event that was not HQ sponsored or endorsed to Greg Everett, quote, fuck you, you fat fuck. <laughs> and all of this is on film. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from sweetheart to fuck you, you fat fuck. Yeah, brutal. Yeah. Um, so there's there, there's a uh, there's a lot here. Wow. There's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot here that goes into more specifically the uh, the 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 real sort of like virulent language being used, um, the the insanity of the entire situation, yep. the escalation and how quickly it escalates and what it turns into later on. And if you read it, obviously, like Kyle mm-hmm. mentioned, it is a one-sided example, mm-hmm. right? It's it's Rob Wolf's perspective on how things yeah. went. It's probably the least generous interpretation. It is absolutely the least Dave generous. Gaster- and, and we we will readily admit that. But what's what's the counter narrative that would explain all of these things? Uh, what what is what is the other thing? I, I don't know. What, I don't what, know what's what the it good is. explanation. I don't know what the other explanation is. Um, that fuck card's always so hurtful. Fat fuck is I'm is hurt rough. For Greg, yeah. yeah, that's that's hurtful. That's a that's a that's a harsh. Those are harsh. Yeah. Those are harsh f's. I think at the time a lot of us kind of viewed uh, Dave Castro like he was uh, Prince Joffrey on Game of Thrones. You know, mm. it's like he's central. But we kind of maybe wish he wasn't as central as he was, but everyone has no choice but to kind of tolerate his participation at a high level in everything. And so then later on, of course, he was poisoned with cake. Um, you know, and that's basically what I think that's kind of an encapsulation of everything that's been happening with CrossFit is it's like poisoned cake. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 